So in 1820, Hans Christian Ersted discovered that a magnetic field circles current bearing wire. So, knowing that a magnetic field circles current bearing wire and magnetic fields interact with other magnetic fields, the next logical question was to ask, how will the magnetic field that surrounds a permanent magnet interact with the magnetic field that circles a current bearing wire? Well, in 1821, just one year after Ersted's discovery, Michael Faraday made brilliant use of those two principles. He found that the magnetic fields around a permanent magnet and a current bearing wire could be made to interact and cause motion. This was the invention of the first electric motor. It's not too difficult to replicate Faraday's initial DC motor. I'm going to use salt water, neodymium magnets, some copper wire, a modern-day voltaic pile, and some connecting wire. So what Faraday did was he took a tub of mercury and he put a permanent magnet in that tub of mercury. Well, we're not going to use mercury. I'm going to use salt water. And I'm going to put some modeling clay in the bottom of my tub so that my stack of neodymium magnets won't fall over. And in that tub, I'm going to put salt water. Salt water is pretty corrosive, so it will cause things to rust. Uh, but mercury is toxic, so we really don't want to use mercury. So what Faraday did was he took his voltaic pile and he ran current from the voltaic pile, we can go to a switch, then we can go to, we have to go into our tub of salt water. Well, I'm going to use a stiff copper wire and bend a little hook in it, and I'm going to set it inside of a straw to help support it, and I'm going to tape it to the top of my two liter bottle. This will help hold it up and keep it in place. All right, so now I need to go from my switch up to that wire. And from that wire, we're going to dangle another wire into our salt water. So I've got a second wire. I'm going to bend a little shepherd's hook in it to hang it. And so that it'll spin freely, I'm going to suspend it from two paper clips that will act as a swivel. And from there, it goes into the tub with the salt water. Now, if my uh, copper wire is too long, which it is, I'm going to have to cut it off some because we don't want it to hit the modeling clay or the plastic tub got to swing freely and now it will. It's important to have that wire as straight as you can possibly get it and suspend it directly over the neodymium magnets. Now we have to go from our battery into the salt water. Well it would be uh, quite messy if I tried to put a hole in the tub and run the wire there so I'm just going to take some aluminum foil fold it over, and I'm going to put the foil into the tub, and we're going to clip the copper wire to the foil. So my complete circuit will be battery to switch to wire through the paper clips, through the dangling wire, into the salt water, into the aluminum foil, out of the, out of the tub, back to the battery. So whenever I close the switch, if all goes well, the copper wire will start circling the stack of magnets. This usually works the first time about 75% of the time. So we'll see if I have to do any adjusting. So now I will close the switch and it's working. 
I'm getting movement. So success on the first try makes me feel pretty good. Now notice which way it's spinning. It's rotating, looking at it from the top down, it's going clockwise. If we want to reverse the direction of motion, there are two ways we can do that. I can reverse the direction of current flow. So by switching the direction the current's flowing, it should circle counterclockwise now. And it does. Another way to reverse the direction of motion is to flip the magnets over. So we can switch the current direction and that changes the direction of motion. So we have a reversible motor if we just have a switch that will flip which is connected to the positive and which is the negative. That's a little more convenient than flipping our magnets over. But notice I'm going to flip the magnets over. It was going around counterclockwise. Now it should be back to clockwise. And it's trying, but maybe not so good at the moment. Okay, there we go. So this is a replication of the very first direct current motor invented by Michael Faraday in 1821.